poop my pants. My pants. <laughs> it's another episode of Rock and Roll Thrift TV, the one and the only place covering all things from music to Star Wars. Ah, <laughs> that shit off me. Well, don't touch it. I'm in my bad, my bad, my bad. Coming to you locally from Baltimore, Maryland, and intergalactically from where, Ryan? The interwebs. Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> I had a couple of people ask me why the hell I was doing that yeah thing last episode. Right. It's it's Skeletor. In case anybody was wondering, I have a skeleton mug. It's Skeletor. Got it? Thanks. It's uh <laughs> it's spelled that everywhere. <laughs> oh, no, I just feel like a lot of people miss that that show. What He Man? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh exciting. What'd you do this weekend? Nothing. I watched the new Star Wars uh, trailer. Oh man, that's it. Pretty much. We, uh, me and a friend at work, were just like talking about it. Yeah. Pretty much the whole time. The first trailer pretty much didn't show you anything. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then the trailer two, if you're on YouTube, the trailer number two, because this is episode two. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, says a lot more. So we're Empire Strikes Back, or are we? Uh, what's the second one? Clone Wars. Whatever. You, it's either Attack of the Clones, mm. where the clones never actually attack. Or, <laughs> you know, I've actually only seen that Attack of the Clones one time. Was not really. It's the worst one, I think. So really, Revenge of the Sith was Sith was not the worst one. No, Revenge of the Sith was good. It was? Yeah, the episode three. Everyone was all upset about that one. Why? Only because Hayden Christensen's acting is horrible. Mm. Other than that, it's good. Really? Yeah. You were supposed to be the chosen one. Why'd you do a Hadouken when you did that? <laughs> Hadouken! <I don't> <laughs> You're supposed to be the chosen one. Ah! Hadouken! <laughs> Street Fighter meets Star Wars. Street Wars. Street Wars. Good that Lord. sounds like Baltimore City right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All kinds of stuff going on. We don't want to talk about that. No, we don't have to talk about that. So what happened Friday? Sure, Friday. What'd you do? Anything? Fun? No. Nothing at all. I worked like crazy, so I yeah I didn't yeah, do no, a whole lot of anything either. Let's skip to like our real life. Uh, okay, that's cool. This weekend. Besides Star Wars trailer. Um, well May second is coming up. That's gonna be an eventful day. Well, you know what I was thinking? How we're both how we both were in the same restaurant but didn't realize it at the same time. Oh, that's right. That was sad. That was Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. It was Saturday. There's a Mexican restaurant in uh, in Hartford County. Actually, I think there's there's some there's around. Ones, oh, yeah. Way, yeah. We were in Hartford County in Bel Air, and we went to La Tolteca. La Tolteca. And uh, I think our, our server's name was Pepe. I don't know. Oh, I didn't, I didn't. I got an American server, so I. I Did you really? Yeah. Okay. Was, I didn't. I didn't get rare. the full experience. You know? We got the authentic experience. So. Authentic experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I went with uh, the future in laws and uh, apparently we were there only about an hour before Bradley showed up. He was like, I was like, what'd you do on Saturday? He's like, well, I went to La Tolteca. I was like, which one? I went in Bel Air. He's like, well, where'd you go? <laughs> we were probably like, sitting back. Like, to we back. were there. Like, yeah, we right. were right there. We were there during the game. So, we were there during the game too. The end of the game. Man, we just missed each other. Mm. That would have been really. Could have been a good time. That could have been a good time. Could have been too good of a time. What'd you get? I actually changed it up and I got nachos this time. Okay. But I got like the nachos supreme, so like you get chicken, ground beef. You know, beans, guacamole, like you get the works. Right, you get, like, yeah. This loaded up nacho. Um, Sarah's father got uh, taquitos. Taquitos, that's small. Yeah, they're like smaller things. There's only only four of them, but like it came with all kinds of fixings. So it's, yeah, it's good stuff. Good I'm stuff. You're using the word fixings. Like, fixings? Yeah. That's a word? Yeah, that's like southern. When did you start doing that? I mean... It's got all kinds of fixings in it. I don't know. What I else just got back from the yeehaw. All right, am I supposed barrel? to say condiments? Who says condiments? You said fixings. People fixings. Con- I don't know. Whatever. That's what they are. They're fixings. Okay. All right, Brad. Ketchup, mustard, yes, relish, onions, all the stuff you put on a hot dog. What do you call them? Condiments. Onions are condiments, too? They're fixings. All right, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> They're fixings. All right. Sauerkraut is a fixin'. All right. 
I got fish tacos, which is good. I always, that's like my thing. I always get fish tacos. If they have it on the menu in any place I go to, it's always fish tacos. How do they serve fish tacos? Is that, how do they do it? Uh, I think it was rockfish, but I don't rockfish. know. I mean, I mean do stick. they fry them? Do they broil them? Like, what, do you know? Like, what? I have no idea. It's, it's not fried. It's not deep fried, right? Is it? No. It was no. just like normal ass fish, ta- fish okay. tacos, to be honest. And I guess they put all kinds of cool, fancy stuff on them. That's too spicy. Too spicy? Yeah, they're you? pico de gallo, right? Pico de gallo. Pico de gallo. Oh yeah, well they make that with fresh uh, jalapenos. Holy oh, shit! It's not jalapenos like in I the can. Ready. Where, I no, wasn't ready. No, fresh. Oh I wasn't yeah. Ready. He wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I need a dog. <laughs> so, so that was that, that was good. That's good. That was good. Exciting. Um, Sunday. Um, I guess it was Sunday. No, it actually was. Uh, what was my day off? Wednesday. So it was yesterday. Okay. Yesterday, Sarah and I finished up, finished up our engagement photos. We are done. We're done. We're done. Can we get a little? Can we, I'm applying for myself. Now we're done. Um, we took our last little bit of pictures at uh, Oriole Park. We oh, got, okay. it, got in the dugout. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, man. It was That's cool. pretty cool. Did you see, uh, what's his name in the Orioles? Adam Jones get upset with the other guy? I did. That was, uh, <laughs> that was good TV. That was right good there. TV. Yeah, it was. Good TV. Um, the best part, though, uh, for my Oriole fans, if you were watching the game, you probably didn't get to see this. You saw after the whole scuffle between Jones and Bautista. Right. Bautista tries to throw a guy out from right field at first base. And, like, it's kind of an unwritten rule that you really don't do that. because He was upset. Well, he was. He let the anger get the best of him, and he chucked it over to first base. And Delman Young, the Orioles hitter who reaches first base, then trots towards the outfield and he goes, Hey, you're not that good. <laughs> he goes back to first base. You see it verbatim on his lips. Hey, oh my God. you're not that good. And trots on back to first base. It was the funniest thing we'd seen. So bad. They said it on MLB Network. They were like, and Delman tells him he's not that good. And I thought they just said it like just to be funny. They're like, no, you can see his mouth clearly say, Hey, you're not that good. What's with us wearing blue? Did we call each other? I don't know, yeah. No, I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt because this is our Star Wars episode, along with my Star Wars mug and uh, my Star Wars. And I'm ripping that's a, the that's actually a dollar because they okay. haven't been gone since 1985. So. There's a sign. There's like a couple signs in the Raven that say R.I.P. Baltimore Colts. R.I.P. Baltimore Colts. Yeah. yeah. They gone. They gone. They gone. But uh, this is a legit vintage shirt. This wasn't like a remake shirt. This is... Ah... Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it just felt right. Okay. All right. So this weekend, I forgot to mention that I binge watched all of those Dave Grohl things that were on HBO. What's that called? Highway. I have no Sonic idea Hi- what you're talking. Sonic about. Highways. Sonic Highways. He goes to like different uh, studios. There's a guy with no idea what Brad's talking about. Go ahead. Get it. <laughs> So he goes to like a bunch of different studios, uh-huh. like famous studios, okay. and some not famous studios, and does one of, I guess, one song in each studio, and you get to see like behind the scenes. It's really cool. Like I'm not a huge fan of Dave Grohl by any means, but I'm a I'm a Foo Fighters fan. I would definitely say I'm a fan. So would you go to one of their shows? Uh, it depends on the price of the ticket, but yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd like to go see them. He just seems like a nice guy. Like I don't know if I'm like super into his music, but he seems like really good. Form and like music, him or not, yeah. like him or not, I mean, uh, our generation, you know, us in our mid 20s people born in the late 80s and the early 90s, I mean, the Foo Fighters are, I mean, they're huge. Yeah, they've so, always been, well, they've always, they've never been huge. Oh, they've been, they're huge. I don't think oh, so. Okay. They've just kind of always huge. been there along the way. I, I agree and disagree. Have you seen a show that's a lot similar to what you're sort of talking about, but it's with Daryl Hall? Have you seen Daryl Hall, like, he brings people into his house? And like does little like music sessions with them? No, no. I think it's on Showtime or it's one of those. It's one of those you know special channels. Got a big one. Daryl Hall. She's Daryl Hall. Man eater. Yeah. Hey, don't knock Hall and Oates. You can knock Hall and Oates all you want. <laughs> I don't care if it's gay to like Hall and Oates. I like Hall and Oates. Yeah, that's cool to like. Hey, I like Hall and Oates. I just can't think of a song off the top of my head that I like. That's all. Oh, here she come. She's a man eater. No. Oh, here she comes. Watch out, boy, she'll do you have. Yeah, whatever. No. They have a lot of songs. Would you pay more for a Dave Grohl ticket or for a Hall & ticket? Oh, right now? Like, if I sure. just watch them right now, I, I'd pay more for a Foo Fighters ticket. See, that's what I figured, too. Right now. But, I mean, if I could go, you know, to, like, 87 and watch 
I don't watch Hollow Notes. Good yeah. Lord. No, Let me just time travel. No big deal. be a lot of chicks there, too. Why? Because it's Hollow Notes. Is that a thing? I guess, yeah. Daryl Hall was, you know, a ship back then. I heard mom, uh, her mom talking about, yeah, Tom, we should go see the Hall of Notes. They're coming, Hall of Notes. I'm like, I don't know. Anymore, I don't know. Maybe. Hey, I might still be kicking it. Never know. I saw ZZ Top, because I'm partial. I love them. I saw them. Them. Yeah, there's a lot of them being interviewed. I think it was 2011. It was 2011 I saw them. They were freaking awesome. Oh, yeah. Billy Gibbons is amazing. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he definitely. I met Dusty Hill, actually. He's uh, all of about five foot two. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I wanted to reach out, like... So he is literally like a gnome. Like a little gnome. He man. does look like a tiny little gnome. <laughs> He's like a it's funny that they wear these giant heel shoes on, on the stand. They wear these boots. Why? Because they're from Texas, I guess. Yeah, they're, they used to just wear, like, country bumpkin hillbilly stuff. They're like... I saw some pictures of them before they even had beards. It was very strange. It is strange. Um, they just looked like a country band, sort of. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I think they said it was Stevie Ray Vaughan, or it was someone real famous, um, saw them, like at a show or something, they were playing with them, they said, you guys don't even look like a damn band, or whatever, and, and gave them, like, a all-black outfits. He said, okay, now you're a band, and it just, it just stuck. So now they wear all black all the time. Weird. Hey. Billy Gibbons has one of those, uh, it's apparently some kind of African hat that he wears all the time. The thing with like little things on it. That like crochet looking hat? Yeah, it looks like, like a cro- Yeah, it looks like something my grandmother could have made in, you know. Well, maybe that's what Billy Gibbons does on the side. Like, maybe, but apparently those hats ripping. are like $700 a piece if you want to actually buy one. A knitted hat? Yeah, it's from it's from Africa, so I don't know. Hey. But if you got money, I guess it doesn't matter. Do whatever you do, right? Do whatever. You if you could record in any studio, what, where would it be? Or in, in any, any state? Studio. We could like uh, record in any specific state in the United States. Um, where would you like to go to spend like a month recording a, a record? A month in any state in the United States? Um, I don't know. I don't want to be cliche and say California, so I won't. But I would want to go out west. Maybe like Seattle or something. Record in Seattle? Yes. Yeah, in Seattle. Somewhere it's where... It's like mega depressing. Is where you want to go? It's not really depressing. I want to go where it rains all the time. It's not really rainy all the time. It's really like a mist. No, it, I mean, I, I looked up when I when I watched uh, the Dave Roll thing. Yeah. There's a really cool. Well, he's kind of biased. He's from no, no. I mean, like me watching. I would love to report where I think it's called Subterranean or something like that. But like yeah. the way it's really beautiful inside. Super big space. There's like rocks and everything. It's like all rock walls. Cool. It's I really watched. Cool. Uh, you ever watch Treehouse Masters? You ever watch that? I no, I told no. You, about you told me about it, but I never seen um, it. There was a. I can't think of what the record company is now, but CeeLo Green is like a, a big contributor to this place. And they built, you know, like 20 feet off the ground, a, a treehouse recording studio. And it's even got like bunks and stuff where a band can just like sleep. That's actually that. pretty badass. Yeah, it, it's totally badass. Like, it's like a it's like a three hundred like thousand dollar treehouse. Yeah, it's, right. Like yeah. when you're a kid, you're like my treehouse is badass, and you want to like build like the most mega treehouse, and then you become an adult, and you're like this is achievable. I have money now. Yeah, it can actually happen if you have money like that. But everyone's gonna be like, no, don't do that. Be good and don't get make be an, be an adult. That was in Oregon. It's in Oregon, I think. Where that tree house is. Oh yeah? Who's yeah. that CeeLo's? It's not CeeLo. He he like was the first one to record in it. Right. But it's not it's it's some company that they just built from the ground, like two two brothers just built it up from the ground and these things happen. These things do happen. <laughs> Keep talking, I'm gonna hit the cameras. Good. Um so what's your, what's your, I don't know, we are talking about recording and stuff. Where's my place? Yeah, your place. Where would you want to, uh, where would you want to, because, you know, I, I'd say, I'd say somewhere Washington or Oregon. Somewhere out west, fresh air, totally different from here. You know what I mean? Just something. No, like, uh, uh, when I watched uh, the Dave Grohl thing, even though it's like super cliche, I say, I want to go to uh, California to, to write a record, there's the name of the place it's called like uh, Rancho de la Luna or something like that but it's a whole bunch of really cool so records is that for... in like Texas or Arizona no no or... it's in California but it's like in the desert okay. of California so it's southern California and it like breaks all the rules of recording it's like a house that they just turn into a studio you me. sorry you should be ah <laughs> ah <laughs> um, sorry I cut you off but it breaks like all the rules of recording but you know a lot of good records come out of there I mean like Foo Fighters did a record there um, 
Arctic Monkeys just did a record there. Okay. And I think, you know, their new style, Arctic Monkeys' new style, is definitely representative of Speaking the of time new, they spent I, in I, I know the desert, I'd say. I know they've been around for a little while, but I'm kind of new catching up with them. Um, are you familiar with Alabama Shakes? Oh, you just now are finding Alabama Shakes? Dude, these guys are awesome. Come on, Brittany! Oh, now, now it tells me, right, yeah, of course. You jumped the gun a little bit. I jumped but, the gun a little bit. But yeah, I, um... It's funny, I got an email. I can actually bring up my email. I think it was from... An email from the Alabama Shakes? No, not from them. Can we be on Rock and Roll Thrift TV? No, I think it was an iTunes uh, email or something. It's, right. I saw the name Alabama Shakes and it just kind of caught my eye. I was like, I have no idea what this is. And then, um, These guys can play. Oh, yeah, they're great, dude. They're, they're oh, awesome. Yeah. They're really awesome. They're like a school band. Like they started out in school together or something. Really? Like yeah. See, I don't know the whole backstory. I don't know. I found but, Alabama um, Shakes. They're a lot more popular than... Uh, I knew. Yeah, it was from iTunes. Alabama Shakes, American Sniper, and more. How do they have any relation to one? Uh, they don't, but there's Alabama Shakes right there. I saw them in Jules Holland when I when I watched, uh, I, I binge-watched Jules Holland uh, later with Jules Holland. Blur has a new album also. Yeah. The Magic Whip. Oh. I've only heard like, a little piece of it. Yeah, I haven't heard any at all, but I will, I will give it a listen. Anything by Devin Albarn is good enough for me. So. I will give it a listen. True. Um, yeah, uh, J.K. Shakes Rowling's book on tape now, uh, The Casual Vacancy. I uh, know. I don't think anybody's read that. Uh, no. Nobody cares. I bet somebody has. If you read care, it. you can comment in the bottom and let us know that you care. But I'm pretty sure nobody cares. Crickets. That's about it. But yeah, no, that's all you guess. <laughs> so yeah, no, some cool things. Not bad. Not mm, bad. Not bad at all. So, current projects and shit that we're going to work on is what? I mean, we got the show on the second. That's not like our project, but yeah, I mean, that's like an upcoming stuff. We have a show on the second, not our show, obviously, but we will be there promoting it. And... Is that the Raven in? Dirt Wolf. Flip it. Flip it. Dirt Wolf, Tony Flip Nicholas, it. and the Nicotines, and Time Consumer. Um, if you need that event info, you can hit up either one of us on Facebook or Raven in on Facebook. We'll put it in the box. Or the oogly. Rock and Roll Through. Okay, we'll, we'll put we'll it in the, the oogly oogly in the box. box below, yeah. A little clicky box. Uh, doors at seven. It's only five bucks. Um, definitely come. Going to be a rad show. We're going to be actually at the Towson Fair. Before that, handing out cards and posters like this one and shit. When is that? That's, that's on the that's, second too. Yeah, right? that's during the See, day. Yeah, that's gonna. That, again, that's gonna be a tough one because you know I get off work at like twelve forty-five. So I'm gonna have to try and get out there. Come meet me. Shit. ASAP. And the big fight is that night, and I'm hoping. They're not playing the Raven. Not playing it. Damn, dude. Do you realize it's like three thousand dollars to get it out of business? Is get it really? Yeah. Three grand? Yeah. yeah. No one's. No one's going to be playing that. Well, damn it, Mayweather and Pacquiao's camps. You need to make it five dollars. I mean, like, five dollars. You get three bands for five dollars. Why can't we have Pacquiao and Mayweather five dollars? Ain't nobody want to watch the fight for three grand. I watch it for five dollars. For five dollars, though, yeah. So anyway. Um, so what do you mean our, our current project? I know project. I saw your uh, a couple of things you showed me that you just recorded on. There. No, no, I want to make a current like a, my like my idea of our current project. I wanted to do I, I wanted to get your opinion on it, but I wanted to do like a video series on building a DIY show. Ooh, I like that. Like step by step, and then like, we'll just I know we already have something set up at the Raven. But we'll go somewhere else and do it just to show how it's done, and maybe see show. People That's a how really good idea. Done. That's a really good idea. You know what I mean? Like the the ingredients, you know, and the steps into building a, a, D, a, a DIY show over and over again and see how that goes. Yeah. So I do want to start working on that this month, maybe next month, and see how that goes. Let's start it now and let's uh, set a deadline for it and go for it. So keep a lookout for that. Hopefully we'll have some how-to videos. All you music that. people hoping to maybe throw your own show instead of I playing the big man's game. <laughs> I heard a, well, I heard. This is me more binge watching all those episodes of Dave Grohl. Uh, some people like out in the desert in California would take a generator out to the middle of nowhere and make like a festival. Where to? Like, middle of nowhere, what do you mean? Just middle of nowhere. They all lived in the middle of nowhere and they would just like, you know, take a generator out and hmm. play shows in the middle of nowhere. You think we could get that kind of following to do that? Or would it just be like 10 of our friends? It would still be fun. In a desert? <laughs> in a desert? We don't have any deserts in Baltimore. See, when you say middle of nowhere, I think desert. I don't know why. It's immediately where I went. 
I don't know, that's what I want to work on soon. So hopefully if you see that out there, give it some blue. Check it out. Tell us how it sucks. Absolutely. So. All right, so this is the Star Wars episode. Let's get to the fun stuff. Let's get to the fun stuff. We saw the trailers. Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you? Wow, like 20, dude. Come on now. Uh, really? That much? Uh, so are we going Christmas Eve at midnight to watch it? Or no, we're not doing that. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about it too, but I'm thinking it might tick off, you know, a couple people who are very important in our lives. Maybe one person. Mom. Mom, man. <laughs> Mom hosts Christmas Eve every year, and um, and it's awesome, and we always have great food, and, and everybody comes over. It's not just family, it's friends, it's everyone. Um, and we always say we're going to start early, but we never finish until about like 2.30 in the morning. So. Y'all never finish nothing until 2.30 in the morning. Look, look, we do one present at a time so that everybody can watch each other open presents. I don't know, yeah. And no other family and I, or, Yeah, nobody else does that. But I mean, in a way I like it, but in a way it's like, yeah, how long have we been here? <clears throat> and all Brad wants to do is start drinking. Hey, I quit drinking, okay? I know, I'm, I commend you. But, uh, I don't know if I can do it through Christmas, though. Get back at me. We'll see, we'll see. I still have that eggnog in my fridge. It's probably get rid of that. Oh, you should definitely get rid of that. It's not eggnog, it's like eggnog liqueur, but I should probably still get rid of it. It's probably rancid. It yeah. probably was horrible when you had it, and it's just. You tried it, it was horrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know, I couldn't tell. I'd already drank enough. <laughs> Too much, uh, what was the. Not Anison, what is it? It's, uh, the Van Gogh, what is it? Whatever that's called. Oh, that should be oh, oh, yeah. um, absent. Absent. Hey, there it is. Fake absent. Half ass absent. Half absent. <laughs> Half ass. <absent. laughs> <laughs> That's something in my eye. Good lord. So, if you had a Star Wars lightsaber, what color would it be? Uh, green. Why? Qui Gon Jinn. Me and Liam go way back. All I can think of is fucking Taken and Liam Neeson as well. Oh. And the same. I thought you were gonna go something way more embarrassing, like that Star Wars video we made when I was like 12. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. You remember, you remember that? Okay, good. That would be a Jedi Outcast, Star Wars Outcast. Oh, I really wish we still had that footage. We probably have some of it somewhere. We were so obsessed with Star Wars as kids that we. Ha I mean, this camera was like probably this. It was one of those 80s huge. No, we yeah, had the handheld so camcorder. Later on. Yeah, not later at on. Not at first, no. And we would record... Well, for, at first we only wanted to record uh, each beating the shit out of each other with lights, with plastic lightsabers. Yeah, we like and then scripted... We're like, well, uh, you have to have more. There has to be a script. There has to be a plot. There has to be a plot. And, so and we wrote up really great plots. Really great plots. It was some really good amateur work, you know. Sad to get noticed. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. We had like every kid in the neighborhood involved. Everyone. Master Schmidius. Master Schmidius. I'm gonna have to tag him now in this. Oh god, poor Schmidt. I'm gonna tag Master Schmidius with was... his third eyeball that changed colors. What was my... in this in this episode? <laughs> it's only because I didn't know what crayon we used to put the. We used a cra... no. We used a, it was a marker. A marker to make like a blue eye or something. He had a third eye on his forehead made out of paper. And then when he got angry, we changed it to a red one. <laughs> so some of this I'm glad I forgot. So what was my Sith name? Uh, God, I can't remember. Good boy! That's all I remember. I've interpreted the plan. The only reason I was the Sith is because I was the only one at the time that could grow a beard. And you had longer hair. And I had long hair, yeah. And in your eyes. Like, did I, have a, I did have a beard. Hair. I didn't. I did have a beard. Yeah. Um, the I had scene, a beard in like fifth grade. The scene of us flying. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, dude, it was like this. It was like, this is the handle right here. <laughs> And then full blast, right? Full blast, right? But here's how it actually flew. I had a Lego spaceship that went across a picture of stars. It, was, it wasn't just a picture of stars. It was a picture of stars, like the universe, <laughs> with Jerry Garcia's face on it. No, Jerry Garcia, John Lennon, and Jimi Hendrix face on it. Kill myself. In space. In space. <laughs> <laughs> There's only like five or six people that are gonna like even maybe watch this that are gonna have any idea what we're talking about. 
And they're going to be dying laughing about this whole thing. We got one of those. Okay, if you remember when you got a CD as a kid, right? That was like years of our show. It, it was. Do you, do you remember? If you got a CD as a kid, like a, a new and unopened CD, yeah. it had that little plastic white piece on the back that was stuck on the flimsy clear plastic. Like yeah, 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 yeah. You could pe- we peeled those off, and if you stuck them together after like five minutes, they would come unstuck, and it would go bang, just like flip everywhere. Well, we decided we were gonna make that like a force power thing in the movie. This in is our Star special Wars special effects, movie. baby, special effects. Yeah, it was back in the day. Look, we got creative with what we had. Okay, so. I am basically the Qui-Gon of the episode, and Mike is basically the Obi-Wan, like a Star Wars episode one. And Mike's going, <sighs> and trying to like make this thing flip up into the cup, and it took like seven tries. <laughs> All that amount of... We're like, you can do it! And he finally did he it. He finally did it. Yeah. Oh, God. What happened to those tapes? We gotta find those damn tapes. They're probably overwritten. Whatever. We gotta like. find those tapes and put clips of them like in this episode. We're not gonna have time for that. I doubt it. Damn. I really, I really want to find that and try it and make that work. Holy crap! <laughs> it's so bad. It it's was just awesome. So bad. It's absolutely it was just awesome. So bad. There's a, there's one scene. I'm like 13, mind you, and uh, I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting for. Somebody to come out and meet me because I'm the traitor, right? I'm the Benedict Arnold. That's right, yeah. And I'm guys. giving the the rebel plans to the, to the bad guys. What plans? I don't know. The plans. They were the those plans. top secret plans. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sitting at our kitchen table. I was supposed to be waiting, and I go, "Hey, I got a drink over here." And from the camera, you see Brad's hand slide me a yeah, thing. Yeah, there was no one else there, so I had to like, hold the camera and like, be the actor at the same time, like, like that. Oh, thanks. Point of view, right? POV. There's a bottle of Kahlua on the table. <laughs> Is there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kahlua, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah they had that. They had that. They had that, yeah. That. It's going to be in the new episode six or seven. You want any death sticks? <laughs> any death sticks? <laughs> So there, now we've got that much Star Wars crap. But anyway, the movie itself, Episode 7, uh, I did see Harrison Ford, and it gave me, gave me a little... I got pretty giddy. It's going to be good. I think it's going to be good. It's I mean, definitely going to be good. If you good. look at how J.J. Abrams did Star Trek, he did it justice, I think. Yes, he did. So, um, yeah, that'll be good. The, the second trailer... The actual voicing of it, I think, is Mark Hamill, right? Narrating. Oh, yeah. You can tell. Okay. It sounded like it, but... Poor Mark Hamill. I mean, he's one of those guys that will never be able to do anything but oh, Skywalker. And just some cartoon acting, you know? Voice acting is something totally different. I mean, like, acting, acting. That's it. I guess. Then again. He's the Joker in... Uh, in the Batman series has been the Joker in any video game of Batman you've seen. Right, voice acting. This is what I'm saying. And it's, uh, that's what he's limited to. Yeah. Cause he's everyone, stuck. When you look at him, he looks like... You just look like... Carrie Fisher will always be Princess Leia. Nothing else. Yeah. How did Harrison Ford escape? Indiana Jones, I guess. I guess. I guess that's what saved him, right? I mean... Yeah. Is he, is he like, the ultimate, like... Okay, for, as a nerd, right, is he, like... Is he it? Like, is he top nerd actor? Top nerd actor. Of I mean, all he's time. Indiana Jones and Han Solo. Who else is he? As far as nerd goes, I don't know. That's. I mean, the only other person I can figure is maybe Patrick Stewart. Oh yeah, Patrick Stewart's like the because he's nerd Picard. Actor. I mean, that's huge, and he's Professor Xavier. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, that, those are. That's very comparable to Han Solo and. Indiana Jones. It's pretty much up there. Vote. Vote, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the king nerd actor? Is it Harrison Ford or Patrick Stewart? Or someone else. I mean, like, who's been in the most nerd movies? I'm going to go Patrick Stewart because Harrison Ford did other stuff. That more, you know, stuff that wasn't, you know, Air Force One, there's nothing nothing nerdy about Air Force One. Right? No. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing. 
I saw a, uh, an interesting movie that you probably think was terrible, but um, it was uh, Harrison Ford was in it, and uh, Harrison Ford was in it, and the chick from The Notebook. Was it was called Morning Glory, and they played like newscasters, basically. Oh, I, I saw pieces of that. That was actually pretty good. Harrison Ford plays like a news reporter that's past his prime it's and is stuck doing really daytime bad, news yeah. instead of like nighttime. He he's basically Brian Williams, and he becomes Regis Philbin. Oh. Like he kind of it takes that kind of step in his career. Nothing you're saying is making it sound any good. It's it's really good and it's entertaining and. Rachel McAdams, isn't that her name? I like to look at Rachel McAdams. Watch the movie. You'll see her. She's there. Actually, I'm probably tired of looking at Rachel McAdams now. Hey, speaking of Rachel McAdams, she's in the new, uh, at least I think it's her, in the new uh, True Detective. <laughs> Watch is not her. True Detective. I have no idea what that is. That's something I binge watched like a month ago. That's uh, Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson, and they're like uh, two, F, I guess F. FBI agents or some sort of like thing like that. Two detectives, obviously. Duh, what the hell am I talking about? Two detectives that are involved in a case that lasts like 12 years or 18 mm. years or something like that. Hmm. If you haven't watched it, you really should watch it. It's a little um, bit dark, but it's cool. I like dark. I like but dark. she's in like, season two is not the same people. They're, they're like a new story. Hmm. It's like her. So it's like it's like how American Horror does it. How like it's a, a totally different show each time. Yeah, except for like it's actually good and not. Terrible. I have never watched it, so I don't, I don't. American Horror Story. I've never watched a single episode. Don't. Some people love it. But I'll say I've heard really I've heard good th I've heard bad things, but I've heard good things too. It's so. like two like <clears throat> bad actors don't make it good, okay. but apparently like you know. A lot of bad actors make it good, apparently. You know, a few bad Matthew actors McConaughey, make a bad right? one, but if, like, you put, like, 40 bad actors into one show, apparently it makes it good. I don't know. And can we, can we go over some celebrity birthdays? Sure. Today? Let's okay. Today, which is our record, day of recording, is April 23rd. We got John Cena. John Cena! John Cena! <laughs> <laughs> Um, for those who don't know what we're talking about, there's a funny YouTube Cena. clip of a... I hope it's not fake. It may be fake. I hope it's not. I don't think it is, but it might be. Hey, hey you never know. It's a, it's a radio station prank calling this woman about ordering pay-per-view to see John Cena. John Cena! And it is hilarious. Um, number two on our birthday list, we got William Shakespeare, everyone. Happy what? birthday, William Shakespeare. What? So it says, born this day, 1564. There's no, BC. like, approximation there. It was like, this is for sure. There's no approximation here. This says they, for sure. They know for sure. Apparently oh, wow. they know for sure. And uh, uh, we might just have to take their word for it. Shirley Temple. It is Shirley Temple's birthday. This date in 1928. She died last year, by the way. Oh, okay. Shirley Temple. George Lopez is 54 today. Yeah. You like G-Lo? No. Not really. I remember me and uh, me and Nick. We used to watch his show really late at night, and he had good writers, but he just the wasn't. Hell, playing. are half these people? I have no idea who Matthew Underwood, Gigi, Gigi, Gigi Hadid. Ain't nobody care. Tayo Cruz. Some. If anyone knows any of these people, please let me know. Ain't nobody famous on there. Caleb Johnson. Is that the? Is that the American Idol kid? Apparently, he's twenty-four. Lee Majors is 76. You're a dork. Good <laughs> lord. Yo, I found out this week. I don't President know James Buchanan. Sorry, born this day, 1791. And, uh, oh, music, Roy Orbison. His birthday today. Oh, there you go. Born this day, 1936. He passed away in 88. Um, Michael Moore is 31. Or 61, sorry. <laughs> he is not 31. I hate Michael Moore. Me too, but it's a notable birthday. Happy birthday anyway. Happy birthday. Oh, Cal Penn is 38 today. In case you don't know who that is, that is uh, Kumar. Yeah. Kumar is 38 is like, today. Look, Cal Penn is actually Kumar, and that's it, you know? I mean, that's it. What else has he done? He's Kumar, right? I guess, yeah. <laughs> wait, that's not... K wait, is that Kumar? Yeah. No, it's... Yes, it's Kumar. Harold is the Asian guy. I know, Harold. I'm just saying, I don't know if that's him. I think we totally blipped there with the phone. What's that's that? okay. We can blip. 
You can blip if you want to. You can turn that shit off. <laughs> that might be all we got. I don't, I don't see anybody else of note. All right. Anyway, I found out that I started to get really into Sade. You know the singer Sade? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is no ordinary love. Ordinary love. I just called her Sade when I didn't Sade? know. Sade? When I, didn't know how <laughs> when I was a kid, I called her yeah, Sade, too. Yeah. I'm a douche, I know. Yeah, what did you do? You know she's 56? Bullshit. Not kidding. 56, dude. I'm going to have to look that up, Brad. 56. Sade age. Sade. How old is Sade? She Bam! 56. 56 years old. Still, Sade Adu. Still smoking. January 16th, 1959. She is almost a year older. She is more than a year older than my mother. Wow. Now I feel dirty. She is nearly two years older than Dad. All those dirty thoughts I had. <laughs> That's Sade. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, Sade. I'm sorry. It's all right. Christy Brinkley's 60. <clears throat> that would happen. And you'd still make it happen. That would happen. <laughs> that, would happen. <laughs> that would happen. Sorry, Sarah. That would happen. I'm just saying. Christy Brinkley. There's a flash from the past. I don't even know what... Christy Brinkley is a swimsuit model, right? She was... Uh, she got famous from... Mo I mean, yeah, she was a model, but she... Um, she, she is 61, if you would believe that. Wow. You know who's hitting that? Billy Joel was. No, you know who's hitting that? No idea. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, <laughs> yeah. On the Total Gym. On the Total Gym. She was in the Vegas Vacation movies. Oh, okay, yeah. Those the Vacation movies, right, with a uh, really old-looking guy. All right, on to the next shit, because this is getting fucking boring. So You're boring. You're boring. The fight, uh, who, who do you got to win? Um, who do I got or who yeah. am I rooting for? Who, who, who are you betting on? Who do I got? Floyd Mayweather. No question. Really? Oh, I got money Mayweather winning it. Yeah, there's no doubt. Really? Yeah, not even necessarily because I think he's better than Manny Pacquiao, but I know how boxing is, and I've seen the fix, and if this fight goes the distance and Pacquiao doesn't knock him out, Mayweather will win. What do you mean? The judges will give it to Floyd Mayweather to keep him undefeated, and then his next fight will draw a bunch of people too because he's still undefeated. I know how this works. Boxing's a money machine. Yeah. But if Pacquiao knocks him clean out, there's going to be no doubt about it. Boxing can't pre prevent Mayweather from getting clocked in the face. Mayweather has never, I tell you right now, never fought someone that's on his level. He will on May 2nd. You think that's why it's such a big deal? That is, that's definitely why it's such a big deal. This fight should have happened four years ago, but Mayweather was too afraid to put his undefeated record on the line and fight Manny Pacquiao. <clears throat> How, why is he? Okay well, Pacquiao's past his prime. He's been beaten twice now. Yeah, that's true. Once he actually should have won, and then once he. Uh, I thought he was a lot older than he was. He just, I thought they both were older than they are. They're only like about thirty-six. I thought they were like forty. They're, yeah, but still, at, at thirty-six, this fight would have been much better at thirty-one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. but anyway, better late than never. I guess so. Yeah. I'm rooting for Manny Pacquiao. So I just we'll, like. We'll make a bet. How much are we betting on? Uh, I'll bet on Pacquiao. How much are we betting? See, I don't want to bet against Pacquiao because then I got to not root for him. I'm definitely rooting for Pacquiao. He's a better, he's a much better guy. Like I like. Well, I guess so. You don't Mayweather. None so, of us have met either of them, so I don't. I don't have to meet Floyd Mayweather to know that he beat the crap out of his girlfriend. And uh, yeah, I don't. I, really? I know all this is. Yeah, I, I don't, all this I don't is, watch the news, so right, you know, I don't, it goes. yeah, I don't. You know, Manny Pacquiao has, uh, you know, isn't he a congressman? I don't know. <laughs> congressman? No, I think he's an ambassador to, like, the Philippines or something like that. I think he's a congressman. Maybe. I don't know shit about the Philippines, so. I, I'm going to get back to you on that. Chicken adobo. That's all. Um, but, yeah, you, we bet whatever you want on it. You want to bet uh, a Raven Burger? Ooh, a Raven Burger on I'm it. I'm down. I'll, I'll bet you a Raven Burger next show. Deal. Is Manny Pacquiao a congressman? Is Manny Pacquiao a governor? Yeah, sure. <laughs> He's a governor, okay. He's the governor. 
No, he is a Filipino boxer and congressman. There you go. Current uh, politicians currently serving as the vice governor of Saranjani. 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 Yeah. No idea. Um. Anyway, there you go. Guarantee if Floyd Mayweather will never get elected to office. That I guarantee. <laughs> that is a guarantee. So, so on to Garth Brooks. On to Garth Brooks. And He's making a comeback. I'm surprised you even brought it up because I know you're not even a fan. I'm not. Well, shame on you. Don't you know you have to like some mainstream stuff, bro? I do like some mainstream stuff. Like what? Get out of here. Star Wars? Is that as mainstream as you get? Come on, man. Garth is good. There's a lot of mainstream things I like. And Garth left his multi-million dollar career to raise his kids. He left his career that was dying to raise his kids. He hadn't had a hit in years. Uh, I think that career is still... Garth Brooks can go anywhere in the country and sell out that thing in 30 seconds. So I don't know what you're saying about his career, but I think it's still flourishing. I don't know. I just I heard the new record, and it the way it's mixed is really bad. Have I haven't heard, heard the new record. I don't care to hear the new record. It's like if Robert Plant comes out with a new record, like it's not going to ruin what I think of Robert Plant. Even if it's terrible. Even if he does something with Allison Krauss that's... Oh, he did that. <laughs> that was good, though. It was all right. It was all right. Yeah. It was all right. Allison Krauss is awesome. But... Union Station is the shit. Yeah. Union Station is the shit. I saw a live concert of them on uh, ASX. On TV. ASX. They don't move at all. It's not oh, really an entertaining like... show, but... Oh, but they can play, though. <laughs> they can really play, though, too. They don't even do a boot scoot. No boot scoot in the boogie That's not that... That's, that's Brooks and Dunn. Who's kidding? <laughs> not Garth Brooks either. What's, who's the, then who is the Brooks and Brooks and Dunn? It's Kitch. Not Garth Brooks. It's Kitch Brooks, and now, <laughs> now he does a top 40 countdown for. Right? He for He's like the country music. Casey Kasem. He's country Casey Kasem. <laughs> Here we are. That was Luke Bryan with his new song. Yeah. That's my favorite, man, mm-hmm. I tell you. Was he the be- was Kix the beneficiary in that whole thing? With Brooks and Dunn? No, I think Kix wrote the songs. A lot of them. In the beginning. Okay. And I'll buy that. I just couldn't really sing know. them, so he had it. Her on it, Dunn! Sing them all. He hardly played guitar either. I don't know why he had the guitar. Oh, he played guitar like this way. <laughs> George Strait style? How did George Strait get as big as he- I'm going to rub a lot of country people the wrong way, right? But how did George Strait get as big as he is? Because his songs are easy to sing drunk. I'm no good, dude. I'm no good. I'm no good. <laughs> That's the truth, though. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. This is the Jimmy Buffett effect. <laughs> yes, yeah, the Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Anybody can sing his songs drunk. Oh my god. That's why he got so. <laughs> All my exes <laughs> came in Texas. There's like three oh notes god. in that. That's why I hang my head in Tennessee. You know, Never been a George Strait fan. I'm not. Like one or two songs. You're down with George Strait. Why? Speaking of people who got famous with little to no talent whatsoever, George Strait's at the top of the list. No, he's not. I'm like, talent means nothing to me, you know. Talent, does, talent doesn't mean anything. Talent is everything. There's, no, it's not. Like Talent is... That's broke this thing. <laughs> talent is like 90%. No, it's hard work is 90% and 10% of it's talent. You tell me George Strait worked real hard on those songs. He worked he real hard on those songs. No, he went to Nashville and he probably wrote maybe one song and it probably was the, oh my ex is it, you know, that kind of shit. And then they were like, well, we got a whole bunch of other songs that are pretty much that bad. Let's make a record. <laughs> shit. All of a sudden you got Southern accent, no, right? That's good. It. We should do an episode that's all Southern accents. All right, so you're not a Garth fan, all right? But Not a Garth fan. No. If you had to choose a favorite song, what is it? And if you need like a little rundown list, I'll bring one. Of Garth? Yeah. Thunder rolls. Thunder rolls. It's like it's probably as as most metal as Garth gets. It's about as rock and roll as country got back then, really. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Now everybody's um, rock and roll in the country music, even hip hopping in the country music nowadays. I like more, most of Garth. I don't like all of his slow stuff. 
A lot of people like they love the slow stuff. The I'll dance is his God for unanswered prayers. Yeah, not, not a huge fan of unanswered prayers. If tomorrow never comes. If tomorrow never comes. Not a big fan of the dance. Not a big fan of you gotta look them up to know if they're terrible or not. No, I'm just looking at all the slow ones. I mean, hey, talk talk about songs easy to sing drunk. I got friends. Yeah, friends in low places is undoubtedly places. the We're drunk song. Dry. I like that song. I'm surprised people that drunk can memorize all those lyrics. Not a lot of lyrics. Well, maybe I could have paint them. It's not really. Blame it all on my room. I showed up in bed. I'm trying to do my Garth Brooks. Black time fever. Damn, dude. <laughs> Is that good? We should karaoke. Last Dude. one to know. Last one to show. I was the last one you thought you'd see in there. I never good. I never understood what it was like the song. I never understood the song until I was an adult. Friends in low places. Yeah, he's at a wedding, obviously. Yeah. He grabs the guys. Champagne glass. And he does his cheers. He does his cheers. Right. Exactly. Um, but now my favorite one, maybe, um, oh, I don't know. Do I have to choose? It probably is Thunder Roll, honestly. Thunder Roll is your favorite? Yeah, probably. No, 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 no. I, I lied, I lied, I lied. Baton Rouge is the only song I think I like. Call him so. Baton Rouge? Call him Baton Rouge. That's a good one. I probably don't want you to put me on to. I got a semi love down to Baton Rouge. I guess because it's, it's so hilarious. Put her on the line, gotta talk to the girl just one more time. Yep. That's a good one. I'll take Ain't that. Ain't going down. I like that one. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. All the fast ones, again. Shameless. That's a slower one that I like, Shameless. No. Oh, God, it's so bad. Don't, don't, don't sing it. Don't sing it, don't sing it. We're, we're moving on. I'm over at Garth Brooks now. I'm gonna call, can we get, like, a guest call in here? I have a Garth Brooks, like, <laughs> a guy that's, like, a very big fan. Should I call him? <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> you keep talking. I'm gonna get my buddy Matt on the line. I hope... I hope this doesn't blow up on my face. But. Don't do it, dude. Don't do it. I'm doing it. I put him on speaker. Y'all be able to hear. Y'all, here I am. <laughs> I'm to talk like Garth. You should, you should call him as Garth Brooks. Hey there, uh, man. I don't know how to do him not singing. <laughs> Why are you calling? What is Garth Brooks' best song, man? <laughs> That's all I'm gonna ask him. Oh, come on, Matt. Don't let me down, man. Thunder Road. Don't let me down, Jesus. It's the voicemail box of 4104589888. Oh, I was gonna leave a. I don't wanna give his whole number out. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Horrible, horrible. Anyway. Damn it. Anyway. So So Garth is making a comeback. Right. Um He is in the top ten of American artists selling. But best selling oh, American yeah, artists of too, all time. Yeah. Yeah. He's he nine. was apparently really big in the UK too. That's just worldwide, yeah. When I went to Ireland they worldwide said Worldwide among American artists. People said he that he was really famous nine. in Ireland at one point in time too. I can't imagine that. But. He's huge. Garth Garth's huge. So he also played minor league he's baseball. Huge. He's huge. He played minor league baseball. Not didn't uh, didn't uh, Will Ferrell just play some baseball too? I don't know about all that. He know. did. He did. Yeah, he played. Uh, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell played baseball. Elf. Yes. <laughs> Will Ferrell played baseball during know. the pre not preseason. What's it called? Yeah, preseason spring spring training. spring training. Yeah, he played for. Like a whole bunch of different teams just for fun, I guess, at spring training, just to fuck around. Did you do anything? <laughs> I didn't follow it. Uh, okay. I didn't follow his baseball career. Garth got two RBIs. And oh, that, so. man. Yeah. Good job, Garth. Garth Brooks. For the Kansas City Royal. Good lord. <laughs> I why, think it was. Why? Why or why or why? I don't know. Why not? Live out a, live out a dream. Garth. Keep living the dream, Garth. Keep living the dream, That's Garth. Right. 
So, the main topic of this talk is what? Star Wars? No, it's not Star Wars. <laughs> the main real musical talk is going to be how to get comfortable on small stages. And I want to talk about your experience and my experience of that. Well, we can definitely talk about... How to fit yourself in small places. <laughs> friends in small places? <laughs> Do you have friends with small places? I got friends... Ooh, no, I didn't know. <laughs> Bleep. But, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we're not going there. Are we, are we okay. Going? Um, no, we, this show in New York... <clears throat> no, it was a small place. Definitely a small stage. We actually... Um, this is a good idea for people who are trying to get used to playing in small spaces. Brad, I was, play with my small space. So we're done. We're done with that. <laughs> I did a penis joke last episode. That's right. We're done with that. I should start hashtagging dick jokes to like every episode. Brad um, put tape, basically on uh, the ground. I found the, out. The, basically, right, I found okay. out there was gonna be a small space. Nine so, by nine, right? Nine by nine, right? Yeah. So I stole this idea from somebody else. I don't remember who I stole it from. I'm not sure what music guy on the internet it was. Um, but basically, I just I took painter's tape and I made a nine foot. Ni- I, I knew we needed a pie pie slice shape, and I made a nine by nine, not in a pie slice. I can't do that uh, in our practice space. And <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, you okay? Fuck out uh, <laughs> Talk about your nine by nine. Oh. <laughs> you like that one? You knew about that? No. Uh, so basically we made a 9 by 9 space in our practice space and I made the boys put all their shit in the center of it and, and we, we played for a month getting comfortable at playing in that space. And then we showed up and what happened? And then we showed up and come, by, come to find out our 9 by 9 space has a baby grand sitting in the middle of it. Yep. So had we not practiced in the 9 by 9 space, I'm pretty sure that show would have been a We've been even show. more screwed. Yeah, yeah. Um, just as many variables as you can get rid of. It's just fantastic, I think. They even, uh, what ended up happening was they moved the drums off the stage. They were off the stage. Right. Drums were off the stage, so Mikey played um, off the stage. In the corner. Nick kind of, he, his, <clears throat> um, he played on the stage, I think. Or he played just off, but he was kind of off and on. He was on, um, he was on we, the stage. We didn't have our guitar, so Brad was playing guitar, so that saves me. It was lucky that we had only four people. It was very, it was very tight. And I was able to just put my uh, my synthesizer on top of the piano and play the piano. The piano was hooked up and mic'd. It was mic'd, yeah. So we played the piano and the... And yeah, you didn't just care. Like You're that. like, I don't care about space. They got deep. Uh, no, I had no... Sp- I mean, I was up against the wall. You loved it. Shut I, the had, fuck up. I, lo- I absolutely loved the show. It was not <laughs> ideal It was not uh, ideal, uh, space. No. no. Not too much room for shaking. But we met Bill Cower. <laughs> you didn't meet Bill Cower, that's right. <laughs> we go to the bar next Ryan door. Ryan fangirled Bill Cower. He's like, I totally fan. Oh my god, it's Bill Cower. But here's how I here's how I approach Bill Cower, right? Okay, so Bill Cower's sitting there. You and I like recognize him. Like, so buy you a drink, bro. For those of you who don't know who he is, he is former coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Famous. No big deal. He um <clears throat> I see him and I immediately know I know, you hit me again. I immediately know that it's him. And Mike and Nick are like, nah, it's not him. Nah, it can't be him, whatever. So I give Mikey my phone, right? And I'm like, don't you take a picture? I was like, I'm going to ask him for a picture. And here's exactly how I approach Bill Cower, right? You're turned around at the bar, right? And I go, hey, can I be a complete son of a bitch and ask for a picture with you? And, and he, he just said, goes, yeah, sure. He's, he's like, probably like, I guess since you asked like that. He's yeah. probably like, I'm drunk enough. Go he ahead. had, <laughs> by the way, he had... Like six um, Stellas. So Bill Cower can put them down. Yes. Bill Cowers, in the hour that we were sitting um, in the bar next to uh, the place we were playing, getting ready to go on stage, Bill Cower probably had about five or six Stellas. So Cower was putting them down. Cower got the power. Cow, cower power. Cower power. So he's with a guy. I guess he was with him, or he was just knew him. I don't know. I don't know. That guy was. There was a guy shit faced drunk in he the was bathroom. Beyond shit-faced drunk. Way beyond it. When you piss, when you pass out in a bathroom in a small bar in New York City, it's not a it's not a pretty look, dude. He was. That's he had pissed himself. He did pee himself. He had thrown up on himself on the floor everywhere. And Bill goes over there and is like, hey, get, get up. Come on. You got to get out of here. Coach him. Yeah. And, <laughs> he was like coaching and, him. And Mike turns to me. He goes, coach him up. 
Bill Cowher probably fucking hated you, Brian. <laughs> he probably did, but Bill was... Like, fuck this guy. Bill was, Bill was coaching him up. He was coaching him up. Um, so One more my... story about Bill Cowher before we get back into stages again is that Bill Cowher told me to... Uh, Hurry up, going to the bathroom. Yeah, he did. And Brad didn't know who he was. First he butted in, like, front line. I didn't know who he was. You know I don't pay attention to that kind of shit. <laughs> you no. didn't know who he was. I didn't know who he was. I don't pay attention to that kind of shit. Like, I, I don't care if you're famous or whoever the fuck you are. I know, but that makes it even funnier Listen. that he just assumed he could cut in front of you. Well, at, you cut uh, in front of two other guys. At the, at the bathroom. And Brad's like, uh, no, I got to piss. Like, I was yeah. here. When it comes to, like, having a shit or a piss... <laughs> If you're famous, I don't it give don't a matter. shit whether you played in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, I don't and care how famous you are. When, when you're in the bathroom, you're just another motherfucking guy. You're just another <laughs> dick in the bathroom, dude. You're just another ass on the toilet. Like, yeah! <laughs> yeah. So, Bill Cow was like, uh, he tries to get in head, head, head. Like, he's left in front like somebody else. And I think he was trying he to like, talk me down. He and, like, didn't you say you guys went for the knob at the same time? We both went for the knob at the same time, and I kind of had to be like dominant about it. Like, <laughs> meanwhile, Bill Cowher's probably like eight feet fucking tall. He's I'm probably a, about six five. I'm yeah, a little small troll, yeah. so I got the thing, and he's like, "Be appreciative if you uh, if you could hurry it up." And I was like, "I'll see what I can do, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> you want to come in here and coach me up? <laughs> and like speed it up, speed up the process. I can't remember exactly what I said. I think I did say something along those lines. Like, I should have been like, "You want to cross swords? Like, let's you know, cross streams. Want to cross streams, buddy?" So Brad, um, for the small stage that we were preparing for, Brad hashed out a nine by nine um, area in our practice in our practice area, and we kind of practiced like not just practicing in the area, but moving around. Like, how much room are we going to have? What's going to feel comfortable? Not too much space, man. Like, um, it worked, though. It worked. I think the best way to really get comfortable playing small stages is to play small stages. Yeah, the more you do it, the more you just kind like, of get uh, used to it. There's you definitely have, small stages to play in your neighborhood, cafes. We've got five record stores. You know, five people in that group when we went, you know, and played most of these places. Yeah. And it they're was, not all going to be huge. We, it was not only. You know, if it would be more convenient if the fifth player was just a guy standing up there playing an instrument. I had to play. I had keys. I had a a full electric piano and a synthesizer, and a lot of times a, a laptop hooked up to it. And, yeah, I yeah. Mean, we did some high tech stuff, and it wasn't easy to fit everybody on that stage. But we made it work. We made it work. Mm-hmm. Bands broke up now. Bands broke up now. Good terms though. Everybody's yeah, still friendly with each other. Yeah. It just wasn't going anywhere, and it was, you know, time to make a move, so. Yeah, definitely. Rest in peace for now, the physical thing. Permanent hiatus, I would say. Permanent hiatus. That's we'll they, see. I think that's what they say. We'll see. Indefinitely. But now we have Rock and Roll Thrift. Rock and Roll Thrift! And I uh, started a new project by my own. This mm-hmm. is good. Mm-hmm. And... <clears throat> that's always good. New adventures, right? The new adventures. You and there's a lot. So you got a little timeline time, written yeah. down here, I see. Oh, Local yes. Local music news. Why don't you give us a little uh, a rundown on that? Where are we going to be? What are we going to be doing? Obviously, the 2nd of May is going to be the Raven Inn Show. Tony Nicholas is headlining that. And the Nicotines, good friends of ours. Dirt Great. Wolf, Tony Nicholas and the Nicotines. And Time Consumer. Doors at 7 p.m. It's only a $5 cover. Drinks are like basic. Drinks are free. dirt cheap. They are dirt cheap. And they're ice cold. Sometimes. Usually. Usually, the last time I Everyone had. I've got been told. Okay. Delicious. There you go. Yeah. Food's good. And affordable. So, come on out and have a good time. We're, we'll be there. Definitely. We'll get you in the video. We're also going to be at the Towson Fair. Towson Fair. So, if you're there, come by and you see us. Just point us out. What time do you think we're going to... We'll roll up there. What do you think? On May 2nd. Towson Fair? Yeah, Towson Fair. I'll be there as soon as it opens up. When when is that? Do we know? We gotta look it up, I guess. Probably like 12 or 1. Is this at the fairground? Oh, no, this I is... didn't go to Towson. I know where this is. And the street fair. They like block off the yes. street and everything. Okay, yeah. perfect. No, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be definitely awesome. I think so. We're not gonna be able to make it out to the 90 Proof show with the scandals. And where is that? That's in PA, but they didn't, you have to text them in order to get it. There's a poster I'll put in the oogly box below. Uh, if you want to go to that show, text them off. 
so definitely go to that show. We're not going to make it out there because I'm going to be publishing Rock and Roll Cook that last day. So, it is what it is. Because we got to get you guys to hear all this awesome stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, so Brad's got to get on that editing game as quick as he can because we had to go a day late this week. Yeah, I'm recording. It's Thursday, normally. That's because Game of Thrones. We had to, I had to watch Game of Thrones on Wednesday. I missed it. I don't want any more excuses for me missing something if you missed this because you had to watch Game of Thrones. Just saying. Have you watched it yet? No, I don't watch Game of Thrones. Oh, you watched Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. See, Walking Dead is like a train wreck. I don't want to watch it anymore, but I can't help it. You've already invested too much. I, I am too invested in Walking Dead. I need to see this through to the end. I need to see how many more people Rick can kill. I gotta see. All right, we gotta round this up. We already passed an hour. Right? All right, let's wrap this up here. All right, so first things first, definitely come to Towson Spring Fest. If you see us, show us some love. After that, we'll give you uh, our cards and posters and all that right kind of shit. Right down the street. Right down the street from there. You can go to the Raven in that night and check out Tony and Nicholas. Tony, Nicholas, and the Nicotines, Tom Consumer, and Dirt Wolf. Woo! Um, Starting at 7 p.m. Doors at 7 p.m. We'll probably get the music in at what? Let's say 7.30 or 8? No, probably 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Go check that out. And just uh, stay tuned for when me and Ryan do a uh, do our thing on DIY shows. Absolutely. But it'll probably be episodic. So probably like maybe we'll do another three episodes or maybe four. Yeah, that's going to be fun. And we're going to, we would really like to get a lot of guests Hell yeah, definitely. On that too, so. If you want to get your music put on Rock and Roll Thrift TV, our show, or if you're coming into the area, maybe you're touring, we have places where we can hook you up. Absolutely. You can do a show around us. And if you have an album you want to promote, anything that you want to promote, definitely email us, email us in the comments below. And uh, subscribe, subscribe, like, share. Like, help us out. We'll help you out. And stay tuned for more awesome musical stuff. Absolutely. Is there anything I'm missing? Um, one thing you did miss, we're thinking of Preakness. Oh, yes, Preakness. Well, we're going to Preakness. It's a little ways down the road. Yeah. It's going to be May 16th, I believe. It is. Um, May 16th, we're going to try and hit up the Preakness. And we're going to Maryland Death Fest this year. Oh, yeah. Do you... Oh. <laughs> one more thing, P.S. I was informed by my friend Eric that New Maryland Death Fest is nothing but a whole bunch of death metal bands and like thrash punk bands and stuff like that. Well, do you know the band Mob Deep, the hip-hop band Mob Deep? Well, there was some sort of scheduling problem with the Maryland Death Fest and like the, the venues. So Mob Deep and was supposed to be playing at the same time as Death Fest was scheduled. Now they made Mob Deep the headliner of Death Fest. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> might have some angry metal in it. No, it would be badass. Well, it'll be. How, it'll be hilarious, if, not, if anything. Okay. I don't so, know how death metal people are. I, mean, I don't know. You're going to find out. Do they get angry? Are they actually nice people? Death metal people are all else. They're all nice people. Every person that I've met that's interested in metal and death metal is all, all the clothes. I'm going to be wearing my Cats in Space t-shirt. That's actually a good idea. That's a really good idea. And where is this? Where's Death Fest? It's in the Inner Harbor. Oh, the Harbor? Yeah. There's like three venues that are doing it. I think it's like Soundstage. And then they have like two stages blocked off in the street. I, I guess think. Soundstage, Ram's Head, like yeah, yeah, all yeah, right yeah, down yeah. there. Okay. So... Exciting. We'll keep you updated. Definitely. This has been the second episode of Rock and Roll Thrift TV. Episode two. Two. Attack of the clones. <laughs> attack of, oh, no, no. The clones never attack. Dude, I've never seen it, so I have no idea. Whatever. We done? I think we are. All right. Like, follow, subscribe. We'll see. Check out Ryan's separate second. channel. Check out my separate channel. Uh, even though the physical things are broken up, you can still check that out. We'll put links in the in the bottom for bands that, that we love and that we are good friends of you ours. You can even friend me on Facebook, honestly, if you want. If don't you friend him just, on Facebook. He's you can just friend me he's gonna straight post, up. No, no, man, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>